Um, okay, so uh, why don't I get us going here and then I think I'm gonna turn it over to you, Phil. Is that how we're, or maybe, um, maybe Seth and then, and then yeah. Phil. Yeah. yeah, we'll all just toss to each other. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> just and and Shayok yes. is joining at some point. Okay, cool. Great. So, um, so this is uh, this is just kind of an informal gathering um, uh, to give some of us on the core team the chance to um, to talk about this amazing, like what we did this summer, basically um, this amazing summer of action that we uh, have had, um, and uh, and the you know the the important punchline, uh, which I won't I won't wait until the end to deliver is that um, pretty much all of it is still happening. Um, right. And uh, we can't, um, can't um, kind of sit back now because um, the uh, opponents of some of the elements of our racial justice platform are, are very much at work. Um, and so we really need to, to stay strong and, and just run through the tape really, really strong. Um, so, uh, uh, diving into our goals, I, I think we're not planning on having like a long, um, zoom call on this. We're going to have more of these in the future. We're thinking like half hour, um, we'll get you guys out of here. Um, so, uh, so we're going to talk about what the summer was like. We're going to talk about like where things stand now on the two issues that are, um, the, the GBIO is working on most right now, uh, which are around police reform uh, and police accountability and um, immigrant driver's licenses. Um, uh, so those, those are the two issues that, that are hopping right now. And then we're also gonna, um, gonna give you guys a short, um, just admitting Ingeborg, um, we're also gonna give you guys a short update on how the re refounding uh, of GBIO is going, um, as well as talk a little bit about uh, the impact fund, which is the opportunity for individual donors um, to give and why that's important. Do you wanna lead us through a summary of um, some of the um, campaigns that were happening over the summer? Yeah, yeah. So before we get to um, the, the tasks at hand, uh, which Shayok is going to be able to give us that bigger 10,000 foot GBIO view. Um, yeah, I want to show you this awesome graphic that takes us through um, a lot of what we accomplished. Let's see. All right, here we go. Screen and I want to share this screen. All right, are we seeing the killer graphic? No. We're seeing the agenda. We're seeing the agenda. Bummer. Yeah, don't give the game away, Phil. <laughs> Let's see. This graphic is so cool. We have faith in you, Phil. <laughs> okay. Follow up on tonight's meeting. All right. Let's try once more. So share. All right, now you guys are seeing my inbox. And in that inbox is this awesome graphic, which I will zoom in on. We are indeed seeing that, yeah. Amazing. You're gonna have to okay. zoom in a, a lot. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right, this is, this, is, this, is, this is pretty good stuff. All right. All right, so over the course of the summer, on the road to racial justice. At the beginning of the pandemic, GBIO sort of went on pause. It felt like there was there there wasn't um, it wasn't the right time to be doing any sort of action. But in the back of our mind, we had um, a healthcare campaign that we launched in um, in January of, of last year, working on some major healthcare reform. And then we as we started reigniting the healthcare campaign. It suddenly became very clear that we um, had that we would have another priority uh, following the death of George Floyd, and we added police reform to our healthcare campaign. And then we it quickly became very clear that housing would also be an issue um, 
eviction, the eviction moratorium became a priority for us um, and realized that all of these things, healthcare and police reform and housing justice are all under the same arc of racial justice. So we called the campaign, even though it was multifaceted, the road to racial justice. So on our way there, the folks from GBIO and many, many First Churchers made 510 calls to House and Senate leadership um, over the matters of over the matters of police reform, healthcare reform, housing reform, um, and the issue of decarceration. We made 215 calls specifically to the Senate to get a strong police reform bill through. We made another 325 emails to get a strong bill out of the House. I'm going to pause here for a second, just a little little bit of a political metaphor. Um, for laws to pass in Massachusetts, we're all pretty politically savvy here, but in case you don't know, for laws to pass in Massachusetts, either the House or the Senate has to come up with a bill. If they pass it, it then gets kicked over to the other chamber of, of Beacon Hill, and they have to vote on their version of it. And then they have to come together in a conference committee, agree on the differences between the two different bills on the same topic. And then finally, that has to go to Governor's Baker, Governor Baker's desk. At any point in this process of back and forth and back and forth and back, the bill can get voted down and, and fail. So this was a push to get a strong police reform bill out of both the Senate and the House. We had 325 appeals to get a bill out of, um, out of the House. We also did a number of in-district meetings. We participated in 14 Zoom meetings with 25 different representatives um, who needed that little extra in-person push to get a strong police reform bill passed along with housing, justice, and healthcare, and decarceration. It was a lot of stuff. We had 120 new institutions, new churches, new unions engaged with GBIO for the first time. Um, and now, finally, in October, almost all of these issues, healthcare and housing and police reform, especially police reform, are all locked into a conference committee between a select few senators and representatives. There's three reps and three senators in this conference committee. And those six people are deciding what's happening with the future of the police reform bill um, and, um, and with the state's budget as well. So now that I've taken you through that little graphic, um, what did that, um, what did, what, what did that, what did that get us? That got us to um, well, it got us to a couple of things. Um, firstly, housing has basically become attached to the state's budget. So the eviction moratorium extension, um, which would last for a full year after the state of emergency is done, basically when COVID ends, a year-long eviction moratorium then kicks in. That's tied to the state budget right now. So it's feel, we're feeling pretty good about that passing. If the state budget passes, then the eviction moratorium gets extended is our current is our current understanding of, of the situation. And GBIO was huge on that. Um, we changed the minds of a number of representatives, including through calls made by First Church people. Um, healthcare, we got a year long extension, um, eliminating out of network surprise bills and expanding telehealth options for insurance providers as you can bill for telehealth um, for, the, um, for, for the next year, which is, which is big. Um, decarceration, not so much. Decarceration sort of fell off the map, um, and we're going to have to re renew that um, re renew that effort. And police reform is locked into a conference committee. Um, the other great thing that, that happened, and I'm going to toss to Seth to touch on this for a second, is we built some awesome new relationships with reps um, and within First Church um, in the sometimes messy but ultimately rewarding um, in district meeting process. Um, Seth, can you talk a little bit about the IDM campaign? Yeah, of course. Uh, and IDM uh, stands for in-district meeting. And it's really just a town hall, basically a semi-private town hall. It's a basic tool of democratic accountability in which you get the opportunity to put questions to your representatives, hear their answer, and occasionally have a, a mini debate with them. Um, my experience was that uh, I live in Somerville. Um, we had a group meeting with three of our representatives from the area, uh, Denise Barber, uh, excuse me, Denise Provo, uh, Christine Barber and Adam Hecht. Um, 
the IDM process looks a little bit like this. Um, during the IDM, you've invited this representative to attend. You've arranged to have as many of your friends and supporters there as you can to make an impression on them. It's local politics, so a dozen people is a lot. Um, the stakes are small and the passions are high. You have the opportunity to have your representative listen to a story, um, which you have carefully arranged uh, with other members of your team. Um, that story is hopefully a personal one from one of their constituents about the issue. Um, you have another person frame that story in the context of legislation, and then you put the question to the legislator, will they support the position that we want them to or not? They have a few minutes to explain their position. Um, depending on what their view is, either they will support or they won't. Um, if they don't, it gives you the opportunity to at least have them clarify and express that they won't or express that they will. So this is a way of engaging with people um, that is a little more like you would engage with a regular human um, in any other course of life. It's not just a one-way street from them to you. Of course, you are their constituent and they must hear you just as you must hear them. Uh, the process of arranging it was pretty cool for me. Uh, we got to schedule with their uh, staff members um, and that felt pretty cool. We got to do turnout and uh, I don't mind making phone calls and doing emails and stuff. I kind of, I find it kind of fun. And uh, I think ultimately it was just a way of contributing that is different than simply making a phone call. You never get a response back. Making an email, you might get a response back or writing a letter. Uh, so if you're interested in doing you know, a little bit more, maybe the next step. Uh, that seems like a good way to do it. Thanks, Bill. Yeah. Yeah, the um, yeah, the IDMs were really cool. They were that like personal pressure that was needed for that was that was needed for a lot of um, a lot of reps. And yeah, a bunch of f first churches, many of you on this call came out to in district meetings. Um, and I think, um, again, I, I think that is really indicated a in the passing of what we were able to get with healthcare. Um, the continuation of housing into the state budget, and the fact that police reform, which was challenged so hard throughout July, um, is still in play. Um, so that's that's because of the power we were able to take to our elected representatives. That's what GBIO does best. Um, I'm going to toss to Shayok now, um, again, who's one of the organizers for GBIO, um, works with like something like getting close to 50 different institutions. Um, and he's going to talk about what what our fall push is now that we're now that we've come all this way amazingly we're not done yet <laughs> yeah should i take it away oh for sure uh appreciate that phil and seth um yeah so i'll just lay out a little bit of like where we are and what the fall um will sort of uh, we we think it is going to look like um so on the police bill like there's there's two pieces just around the fall uh, or around the summer push um I think the two biggest, like most impactful pieces of the police bill was one, the sort of the, the certification process for police, uh, you know, who have, um, hold on, there's like these weird messages coming up on my computer that is disturbing me. All right. Um, so uh, the decertification process basically makes it so that police who have, you know, committed misconduct and you know, so they they just kind of are able to leave a department and go to another department, and and there's no repercussions, right? And that's called the wandering officers problem. And so decertification it allows there there's like a statewide panel uh, that would you know decertify an officer for committing certain kinds of abuse, right? Which is great because that's a form of external accountability, right? So that's one really big piece. Second really big piece, which was more controversial, uh, is qualified immunity reform, right? And qualified immunity is essentially it's like a legal shield that police uh can invoke uh you know to, to basically avoid certain types of accountability uh and violation of civil rights um because they're a government official right so and this is used in a lot of different types of crazy cases like you know there's a case of a, a police officer who like publicly strip searched a woman you know in massachusetts and and by the side of the road making suggestive comments that was covered under qualified immunity because you know he's a government official that you know this is part of the line of duty type type thing okay um that piece has been really been fought by the police unions like super hard, right? And so uh, I think one of the major measurable impacts that we have had is we were sort of, sort of the main force, uh, citizen force, citizen power force uh, in favor uh, of qualified immunity reform. And 
uh, while we didn't get sort of the stronger language we were looking for, qualified immunity reform like remained in the bill, right? Because of what we did. The police unions were trying to take it out altogether. So now, uh, now we're in a situation where, you know, we made this big push in terms of the in-district meetings. Uh, we're moving to sort of a, uh, a phone call portion uh, uh, of, the, of the campaign. Um, as Phil said, it, this, this bill is now in conference committee and the police unions are pushing on one side to, you know, remove uh, any kind of strong parts of this bill. You know, they, they made literally 2,500 calls in August alone, right? And that was like five times the calls that they received, that the legislature received from police reform advocates, right? And, and, but to give you a sense of scale, like before that, you know, in the summer that we were active, the six weeks we were active, we made about 1,700 contacts ourselves. Um, so like that, that goes to show, you know, we're one of the few forces that again has um, significant like ability to resist uh, the police union's influence, right? So there was like a call in action last week. I don't know if folks uh, participated in that or, or, or if you guys were able to, to put that out. So I've seen some nodding heads, that's great. Um, that's really important at this time because again, the legislature is getting really hammered by police union in, in terms of uh, trying to remove any kind of qualified immunity reform. Um, so the fall is really, you know, to sum it up, the fall is sort of a time in terms of the police reform campaign to get it over the finish line with the conference committee, get it on the governor's desk and pass it. And, um, you know, but the major, the in-district meeting push was, was we, we kind of peaked there, I, I, I would say. Um, I, I'll, I'll also briefly say the driver's license bill, it's in the Senate Ways and, the Senate Ways and Means Committee. Um, there was a march on September 26th. I'm not sure if folks were able to, to come or, or you saw that. Um, okay, I see, I'm seeing some, some raised hands as well, that's great. So we're part of that coalition. It's not like a direct, uh, it's not a campaign that you know, we're doing in district meetings about per se, but like we're certainly supporters and that's why you know, folks are coming out. So that's, that's also something to, to make calls about. Um, but really like, uh, I think GBIO wide, uh, there's a couple things that, you know, th those are the action pieces, but the fall is also a time, you know, for consolidating in a sense, because we really, you know, I don't know about you, but the six weeks like th that, the IDMs and the industry meetings and all that, it was like really crazy. I mean, we were getting email, like, you know, Phil in particular was on the steering team for that. And at like literally hour, within hours, you know, the situation would change, we'd have to react, it was crazy. Um, and a lot of people were really involved and a lot of leaders came out and a lot of new people uh, who hadn't been formally involved in, in, in organizing uh, Weeks ago. came out of, uh, uh, of all these different churches and congregations, right? So every time we do a lot of action like that, we have to take some time to consolidate those gains in a sense, right? And this is part of what this is, right? This is, you know, and trying to, uh, you know, identify some of those new leaders who are coming up and me and Phil, you know, what. And, and, and we, we've discussed a little bit about the possibility of, you know, maybe a, a, a training in the fall with First Church, or maybe a joint training with one, you know, Reservoir or, or uh, some of the other Cambridge congregations. So there's a possibility for that because this is all leading up to essentially the spring, right? In the spring, again, we, we will ramp up again. And, and so I'll just close out by talking a little bit about the spring with the refounding. Um, some of you might, I'm, I'm sure you've all heard about, you know, the, the refounding process, the idea that GBIO is, uh, you know, well, the refounding began in 2018 when we were 20 years old. And, uh, you know, GBIO found that, like, uh, basically, there was some soul searching done, and it was, it, and, and uh, it was clear that GBIO did not accurately reflect, like, the demographics of Boston, right? Uh, and what we needed to do was to broaden that. And so, like, we've been on a mission of engaging new institutions, particularly institutions of color, institutions of working, more working class. Um, so we'd have, you know, there's, there's been progress out of that. So uh, there should be about 10, 15 new institutions who are gonna join up uh, and are, are joining up already um, over the next few months uh, because of that work. And you know, so that includes SEIU 32BJ, uh, you know, and then that includes Hyde Park Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, you know, there's, uh, basically a bunch of different institutions that, that will be coming in. And that will mean a new, like that'll need some, uh, that, that'll mean GBIO needs to come together and basically figure out the next sort of agenda, right? So there's gonna be a lot of listening at, coming out of that and figuring out, all right, so we have these 10, 15 new institutions. We've gone from 40 institutions to like 55. Uh, what do these folks, what, what do they wanna do? What do we wanna do? And how can we go into action together? Okay, so 
um, this is the time to kind of get your own ducks in order as First Church, as a, as a established member of GBIO, you know, to grow your base and, and to maybe do some trainings with the Cambridge congregations. There might be some local action opportunities, or particularly around homelessness, uh, that I can keep you abreast, uh, updated on as, as, as needed. Um, and, uh, but yeah, it's, it's really those things. It's, it's getting the police bill over the finish line, the driver's license bill, you know, kind of consolidating, you know, within First Church by doing relational meetings and, and leadership training in the fall. Um, and then the possibility of local action around homelessness, particularly because, um, you know, uh, no city, including Cambridge, has a real plan for what homeless people are going to do in the winter. Like people are going to right now freeze to death. They're going to die if, if, if we don't do something. And, and Alice Kidder is on a uh, working group uh, with, with several of us uh, working on that. Um, there may be opportunities for public action around that. Um, so that's what I'll, uh, I'll leave it there. I don't know if there's anything else uh, you want me to cover, Phil. Uh, thanks, Ben. Um, yeah, lots, yeah, lots, um, lots going on. It's going to be a busy season of both centering and then also preparing to act. Um, we did want to wrap up today um, by hitting three different action things, um, two of which you can do right now um, in the course of this call and then one of which um, we're going to ask you to make sure you make time to do this week if you haven't already done so already uh, i'll let will go with the first one there it is okay so three things uh that we can do right now before we wrap up um uh the first thing is that uh we are going into the time of year when we do our annual impact fund uh, asking so the impact fund is the um, uh, is the way in which it, individual donors from um, both member institutions and and anybody really uh, can have an opportunity to to give to GBIO. Many uh, looking at the tiles on my screen, I think many of you already give. Um, a lot of us uh, give. Um, some number of dollars every month uh, in just kind of a an ongoing sustain sustaining set it and forget it kind of way and that's great um, I am for anyone who's interested in that um, and feels feels called to um, uh, to to sustain GBIO in this way I'm going to put the link in the chat um, but I would say really quickly um, GBIO is funded uh, through three streams. Um, there are uh, what's called membership dues. So those are dues from each um, congregation and institution that's a member of GBIO. Second way is through uh, fellowships and grants uh, and um, you know foundation funding. Um, and then there's this third uh, stream of individual donations, which is pretty new. Uh, we developed that stream several years ago when we found ourselves during a healthcare um, uh, during healthcare action on the opposite side of partners, and we had at the time a very large uh, grant from them. It's like one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. It was it was a lot. I mean, GBIO doesn't have that big a budget, uh, and it got pulled. And we realized that we needed to come up with a way to um, to make ourselves more financially independent from some of those really powerful local foundations that we had maybe become a little bit too reliant on over the years. So I'm going to put that link in the chat and I hope that you will uh, consider donating. And um, should I pass back to you, Phil, or? or... Sure. Great. Cool. So that's action one making sure that we can keep on trucking. Um, action two, um, Shayok mentioned the driver's license campaign. Um, and I think Susan, you may have been involved with this peripherally as, um, as, as well. Um, we've, we'd, many of the people we'd gone into partnership with around racial justice um, have been making getting driver's licenses for immigrants um, a priority as well. That's it. Um, yeah, you can't really get to racial justice in Massachusetts if you if if we don't if we don't have this. So we've added this to our um, to our platform, and I'm going to add a paste a link in the chat below the um, below the impact fund link, 
And this link, which you can follow immediately, will take you to a letter um, that auto generates um, to all of your local reps. You just need to put in your name and your address. Um, again, through GBI, we try to focus on relational meetings, like doing phone calls and actually getting to know our reps. Um, but at the end of the day, they also do just count up how many emails they get on a, on, on, a, on a certain topic. And so the more we can send to our reps saying immigrant driver's licenses, licenses are a must, um, the better. So here's this big old link. If you click that right now and take two seconds to put in your name and address, then we'll get a big piece of action done and some quick pressure on our state reps and on the governor um, saying if we're gonna do racial justice, immigrant driver's licenses need to be a part of it. Um, so it wouldn't take two seconds, click on that link and put in, um, put in your info. And can give us a, do we have the little clapping emojis here? If we do, everyone give us a Zoom clap when you've made it. Yes. All right. How are we doing, First Church? Yeah. So, great. Okay. All right. And our last, our third and final, our third and final piece of action. Um, Seth, do you want to do you want to tee up the the conference committee calls? Yeah, I got the easy one. <laughs> to refresh your memory, the conference committee is what's responsible for reconciling the legislation from the House and the Senate. Uh, the results of their negotiation will determine exactly what of our objectives get passed and, uh, and what don't this year. If you wanted to comment on that to these legislators, then I will paste in chat. Just done. The info sheet on this, you can make phone calls, you can make emails. There are six legislators. If they're not your particular legislator, it doesn't matter. They're gonna tell you to contact your legislator. You can still contact them, it's okay. That's just how politics works. And that's all. Well, I've got a hand up from Alice. Yes, um, uh, Will Brownsberger is the chair of that joint committee and he's my senator, so we had a very serious conversation about what's holding things up. Mm. Um, the outlying areas um, are not coming up with the votes, so they aren't reporting it out because they don't have the votes. So um, it would be important to reach out um, to people in outlying areas and get them to call their state legislators and explain that this is an insult to racial justice and uh, uh, that you support this bill. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you, yeah, if you can, you feel free to forward the call script far and wide if you've got people in Western and Central Mass. Um, let's keep that going and help them, help them, get, help them get the votes. All right, there's our three actions. We've done, we've, already, we've done two. 
we've done the driver's license bill and we've done the um and we've taken and we've done the in, impact fund and make time this week to make those make, make those calls call through all six it's real the more the more they hear from us um better because um, they are again getting just pounded every day by the police unions so before um before we before we wrap up i wanted to take a tiny bit of time just for any any questions on the floor about what um yeah what 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 might be next um in in gbio world i know and i i know there's i know lots of you are working really hard on your own areas of racial justice i know holly works really hard on the friday cafe um and susan works really hard with kosheka um, and alice works really hard on everything um, um, but if there's any other GBIO specific um, questions or interest in getting involved, um, um, yeah, yeah, so, go, go ahead and sound off. Alice. Oh, I just want to thank Shiok for his work with the Cambridge Nonprofit Coalition on the subject of the beds over the winter. Um, he's been organizing us and it's been very helpful and um, we're putting pressure on the city government uh, and having direct talks with the city manager about this and I'm hopeful something will come out of it and Chayok is to be thanked. Mm -hmm. I think he just had to drop off, but we will yep. Yep. pass along to him. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any, any newcomer? Oh, Susan, go ahead. Uh, just wondering, because I went to the last GBAO general meeting, which was exciting, and that was when healthcare was prioritized. Mm -hmm. What's the next mass meeting will there be such a a meeting um there there probably there probably will be here's here's the here's sort of the internal hunch there probably will be on the other side of the general election um we think for a num we think for a number of reasons um beacon hill is holding up a lot of stuff um on the um until the other side of the general election um there's a there's a prevailing theory that part of why the police bill hasn't come out yet is some of the conference members have Republican challengers. Um, and if they put out a bill before the election, that could give a Republican challenger some more fuel. Um, so I think on the other side, we may get, we may actually get a conference bill out, but um, a major, I, I would not anticipate another major meeting until we see a conference committee bill. Um, and then we'll get together and find out exactly where we need to put pressure. Is it back on our reps? Is it on the governor? Um, right now, we don't know exactly where that pressure needs to be, um, other than on the conference committee. Um, but that'll that'll come. And then spring also we'll be, have a, a big refounding gathering when all of our new orgs will join, um, sort of officially, and that should be fun. Again, probably on Zoom, um, but but we'll see. Thank you. Yeah um any 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 new any newcomers have any have have any, have any thoughts or um or reactions In ingeborg um, or claire or irma well uh, i would be interested in what you mentioned uh, possibly a training conference yes I moved, uh two years ago now already uh to massachusetts so i'm not completely familiar with all the uh, political uh ins and outs here in Massachusetts. I was involved in Connecticut with uh, more a professional, getting a professional uh, licensing bill through the process uh, a number of years ago, uh, 15 years ago. But I'm not very familiar with what's all pending and where to, you know, to read the, the bills pending and so on, the whole process. I would appreciate one of those training conferences. Awesome. Yeah, I think yeah. So I think I think I think I think something like that is 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 forthcoming. Uh, maybe with some of our neighbors in, in 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 Cambridge. A cool thing that came out of the IDM campaign was a new relationship with the Reservoir Church in North Cambridge. So we might do one together. Oh, Chris and Jim. Uh, yeah. So we in, uh, so in the last couple of years, we've learned a lot more about uh, local stuff going on. We went to one of uh, 
one in-person meeting with our state rep, and we've been to uh, three or four of the uh, in-district meetings uh, on Zoom as well. And um, so there, there's uh, sort of big question is sort of what, what they say publicly, they're in a small setting or a large setting versus what's actually going on. And it's sometimes a little hard to read that. And yeah. our state rep um, general said, said nice public things. Uh, he actually has a challenger um, at the moment. Uh, mm. Not quite how to figure out um, what, uh, <laughs> uh, what, what we should do there. Uh, yeah. Any thoughts on, on that or how I would go about that? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. That, yeah. That's that, that. Yeah. That's something that's something that we should that we should look we should we should all, all look into um, for I think Seth sort of touched on this earlier. Um, yeah. Just for like and, and you're getting this now. Our, our reps are very are more accessible than you think, um, which I which which I've learned, especially the ones at the state house level will like if you write them, they'll They'll write back. They'll write back to you, and you can get a conversation going. So, it's clearer where our state senator is on a lot of questions, and yeah. uh, where where his heart is, and, and where the drive is. It's yeah, on the prep side. Yeah. So, great, awesome. All right. Well, we've kept you all for about fifty minutes, which I think is plenty. Which I think is time enough. Um, in short, make time to um, make, make time to call the conference committee this week um, if, if you're able to and stand in and I think just stand in readiness for more digital actions and more and and, and, and more and more push um, we may have a training on some local actions um, you know if, if um, keep we'll all try to keep abreast of the work that each other that we're doing as as individuals and other aspects of the church um, again Alice and Susan and Holly are amazing in in all of their individual efforts um, so keep up with their with their activities. Um, I will close us out um, again. Th and thanks to Will and Will got kicked off, but thanks to Seth for helping lead on the core team. Um, and Casey Marsh, who isn't here, is the other core team member. Um, we'll leave with the GBIO um, Zoom prayer that's been developed. It's good fun. Um, I need everyone to put a hand in the middle, um, like we're like 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 we're a football team. And you can go ahead and un un unmute yourself with your other hand. This is great. Right. And, <laughs> all right, and, and so on, on the count, of, so I'm going to say one, two, three, go. And on go, we're going to do go, fight, win, amen. Awesome. <laughs> and, we'll, and, and, and then we'll, then we'll oh. be out of here. All right. One, two, <laughs> three, go. 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 Fight. fight. Win. 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 Amen. Amen. I told you it was chaos. Um, <laughs> I'm so glad you all came today. Um, let's um, go in peace and and go in action. Have a have a good week, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Bye bye. Thanks.